Good afternoon, everybody. It is Aaron Feenster here from Countryside Eggers. Two months ago, uh, today we came to Russia for the first time. My wife, Anissa, myself, and eight of our children. And we are hoping to set up a home here. In case you're new to the channel and don't know that, uh, we are here on a tourist visa and we are working on getting the paperwork ready for our uh, temporary residency. And hopefully we will be allowed to stay. One year ago today, we uh, tapped our maple trees uh, for the first time. So that would have been 2023, we began tapping our maple trees. So if you don't know what that's about, I think you will enjoy this video. We made maple syrup every year uh, that we own that farm and it's something that we actually miss. So we were thinking about it now today and we went and looked at the video and we thought, hey, you know what? You guys might enjoy that video. So take a look at that, drop your comments down below. Are we waiting for Hello everybody! It is another beautiful day. Not a cloud in sight, beautiful sunshine, the snow is melting, ice is dripping. It's great to be alive. We are on another family walk. Some of them are gone already. But I got... Oh, lost one. I have two boys. Oh, three. I still have two boys. And I have a third boy and I got Mama and baby Madeline. And the rest of the girls are up ahead somewhere. We are off to the bush. Time to tap some more trees. Strategically placing sticks to hold up pails by the expert Miss Ainsley. Works good, eh? You think it'll work? I hope so. Until the deer knock it over. Lots of sap running out of some of these anyway. Oh, this guy quit for now. Ooh, where is it? There it is. Nothing running now. It was running good. I think they are. I think it's just not in drips anymore. I think it's just leaking down the side of the thing. Is it? Uh, maybe. I don't see anything in that one. Zoomed in too far. Uh, I don't know. We'll show you some other ones. It is nice in the bush though. And uh, no snow, hardly. Last year we had to fight through lots of deep snow. This isn't too bad. Everybody's just standing around in anticipation. When will the syrup be ready? Are you waiting for syrup? When will it be ready? You don't know. <laughs> when will it be ready, Wayla? 
after we cook it. After we cook it. Man, we have to wait that long. Can you wait that long? No? You want to have it right now? You have to wait though, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is what it is. Light angle upwards. He's going to go slower. Light angle upwards. You want to see that. You see how it's nice and clear. Shaving's coming up. That one gets a little dirty. That's because of the sap now. Here. If it's nice and white, shaving is coming out. I'm told that's a good spot. And then even deep enough in order to get some sap. I can't really tell on that hole, maybe. This one here, he just did, and it's dripping already. Bloop. There, that one's wet now. Where's the hole? i got to find it right there. Right up there. You can see it's dripping out of the tree now. Okay, then we put the tap in. Hey, there's the last one. One person pushes the tap in the hole. Second person comes with a hammer, bangs it in the hole. This is a multi-person job. Other person drinks it out of the tap. <laughs> and that's what makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> My job is actually to work. I have to put hoses on. Whoops, and drop them. I put the hose on. Wes drills. There's Wes. Wes drills. He sticks him in the hole. She pounds in the hole. She inspects the hole and gives me pails. I put a hose in. Teamwork at its finest. Hey, that's not your job. That's Ariana's job. How's the tasting? It's good. It's worth it? Makes it all worthwhile? Definitely. Poor tree. So one thing we do is we use old ice cream pails. The, uh, the ice cream shops buy them in these pails and the pails all go to the dump. So we use them here for uh, sap collection. Drill a little hole in it and then we can put the holes into the side of the pail. And then we pop a lid on the pail. You can buy pails. Uh, anybody that does sap obviously knows this, but if you don't, uh, you can buy different taps that you put in the tree and they have a little hook on them and then you can hang pails on those hooks with a lid. But each one of those pails is $13, and then the lid is another, I forget. I want to say five, but I'm not sure if that's accurate. So, I mean, this is a lot cheaper. This whole this hose, I got 500 feet of this hose for $75. Uh, the taps, I just bought another 100 used for 25 bucks. I cannot remember what I paid for the original ones, but I would say they're at least double that uh, new, considering that's what I paid for used ones. So... Then um, the hose is typically used in a system with a vacuum line where they hook all the trees together. It would be all the way around the bush and then they'd have like a pump where it would all end up in a, an area. So you don't have to go around collecting your pails. But we found this worked really well. The pails I get for nothing. Some of them I had to pay 25 cents for, some of them I got for free. Uh, so it's, it's very economical really, drill a hole in them. And then if one gets wrecked or something, it's not no big loss, right? They, they end up in the dump where they would have ended up anyway. There's no recycling for them, I guess. So. so we've got quite a bit collecting in this guy already. I just stuck these in and look at all that sap. This one's really running out good. Pretty cool, yeah, my guy. It's gonna be interesting to see, uh, come back tomorrow or the next day and see 
how much sap we've got. Whoop, where am I? There I am. Loads of fun. Okay, so we've got, I think, about 90 taps in. I ran out of pails. So I gotta uh, <clears throat> get some more. Last year we only did 100 taps, that's all we had. Uh, this year I have a lot more taps. And yeah, we could have tapped, I think, at least another 30 last year, but that's what I said anyway. But now we're uh, we're about 90 in. Well, it'll be still about the same, I guess. I figure we can do, West thought maybe 60, and I was thinking maybe 40. So maybe 50 taps more. We'll see. We're going to get some more pails, though. Uh, we're running two taps per pail this year. Uh, last year we did some three, some four. But we didn't always get here in time, then they are overflowing, so that's not much good. So we're going to get some more pails. We'll get them lined up, uh, if I can find some. Otherwise, we'll think of something else. We're pretty good at adapting, I guess. But yeah, quite a few more trees. So right now we're just drinking. Drinking out of the pail. <laughs> Busted. Oh, here's another one. I see you. <laughs> yeah, and somebody's having a seat on the pail. That works too, I guess. Yeah. That's yummy. Yeah, it's supposed to be really good for you. It's kind of a mineral water, I guess. A lot better than uh, mineralized water you buy in a store, anyway. It's very sweet. Oh, it's still water, though, so the uh, it's not as sweet as maple syrup, of course, but it's very sweet. And it's got loads of minerals. It goes deep down in the earth, grabs the minerals, pulls them up. And it's supposed to be very beneficial. So. Hey, everybody. I guess I could take these off. We're back at it again, as always. We've started a project and forgot to film. Oh, let me get those off. Forgot to film a chunk of it. So, kind of getting into the middle of it here now, but I will try to fill you in as to what we're doing. So we had this old stove. We've carried it around for four years now, I think. Came from our old dairy farm. It was uh, just laying up in the attic there. We thought, eh, it might be handy for something, so we took it along. And we haven't had a purpose for it, and finally we're going to use it. We're going to try to cook syrup on here. Got a little chimney wrecked it up here. Wes put it all together. Hopefully that'll work. This unit was an old coffee maker. You flip that over with. Where's the inside part? It's in the house. Okay. I think it's a coffee maker. I don't even know. I found it in a scrap pile at uh, an Amish guy's down the road, and he was going to get rid of it and uh probably or, or a heater of some some maybe for food soup i'm not really sure then it had these on the front so we've removed everything this is not going to be used we're going to use that hole there still where it came out of but i've got a new piece of pipe i'm going to insert with the tap we're cutting open the bottom right now we've taken the electrical element parts off we're cutting the bottom of this open you flip it over again wes What I'm going to try to do is bend these flaps open. I've got it cut here along the sides and down the middle and there along the sides. And I'm going to try to bend it open so that it'll fit inside the hole on the wood stove. Pop it down inside. Then the flames will be able to hit the bottom of the stainless tub that sits inside of this. That's the project for today. You're up to speed and now we'll try to film a bit more. Okay, so that's kind of what I had in mind. It's pretty crude, but it should work. Hindsight, I probably shouldn't have cut here. Um, these flanges, I didn't realize that, but it's actually the metal comes across, bends up, comes back down, and goes over. So when I cut the flange off, it actually separates the two pieces. So hindsight, I would have left this here, because this stays anyway. Or I could have bent these over. Because you'll see when I put it on the stove, there's actually a bit of a gap. But that's alright, it don't matter. It's just for cooking syrup. So there's the idea. It fits in. Probably bend those sides a little bit yet. It doesn't rock anymore. That's good. So this side can sit pretty well right up against. Which seals that pretty good. And then these sides actually sit on here. And then the other side. So here, oh, the gap's not as bad as I thought. There was a gap here. But it's actually not bad. That's pretty bad. small now. I think that'll work. And this side's sitting on pretty good too. Okay. So I think we'll bend those around. So they don't, they hold on better. And then we can drop the pot in here. 
So this is the inside part. It's a nice stainless jug. Get it in the sunlight there. And it's got a spout coming out the side here. So we took off. It has this uh, type of coffee apparatus, but we've got some other stuff we'll screw into here. Should fit good. Uh, on the outside of it, it's got like a double wall for some reason. I'm not exactly sure what that was for, but we're going to try cooking with it on. If that doesn't work, I think it would though. I mean, it's just thin. If it doesn't work, we'll try to find a way to get it off. Okay, drop that in the hole. Obviously, this isn't up to commercial size. It gets a pretty small unit. But uh, it'll get us to do a couple pails. I think I think we could fit a couple pails in there. It looks like it's in a whole pail and a half anyway. I don't know how tight to go. All right. guess, guess what we could have done, Papa? We have that elbow and stuff in the house. We could have ran out and had it on. Here. Yeah, and then hit it off the side. Yeah, that's all right. I think this will work. I hope so. Should be good. Now we're gonna build a fire. Okay, fire's going. Took a while before it heats up, but see smoke coming out. So this whole hole I don't think is gonna cause a problem, but anyway, there's smoke coming out of that, and then of course smoke coming out of the chimney. So it'll be a while before all this, because there's ice in there. It'll be a while before it heats up. There's a good start. This here, as best as we can figure, is kind of like a draft control. So we'll just leave it open here now that it's sucked lots of air. But we could con possibly control temperature by closing this and opening this. Okay, fire's been going for a bit. It's burning good and clean now. Oh, well, it's a hot fire when you can't see any smoke. Isn't that neat? All I see is heat. <laughs> so she's burning good and hot. Ice is melting off. A little bit of smoke coming out of here. It's very good. You can still see the fire in through there. Can't seal it off completely, but so far I'm pretty happy with it. Now it's just a matter of seeing how fast this will heat up. Once the ice is gone, it'll obviously go pretty quick, but then we got a few more pails to dump in here once, uh, once it starts boiling and the water level goes down, then we'll continue to add more, uh, more ice to it, I guess, too. But. the way she is so now uh, yeah it's just a matter of waiting so far so good it's evening now I just got home here had to run to town for a bit uh, Wes was tending the fire now he's in the bush getting more sap so I haven't been able to ask him whether or not he put more pails in but I don't I don't think he has I'm not sure I'll show you what's going on now anyway okay so fire's still going everything's working pretty good Take this off because it's hot. It's steaming pretty good. It's not boiling or nothing though. It's just steaming. And it's going to take an awfully long time to get this down. Cooked down. So I just put the lid on when I got home. He didn't have it on. I don't know if it need to or not. But the thought was to keep some of that heat in. Maybe the water will heat up faster and then cook faster. The other thing I find is going on. So we'll probably... Sorry, let me get this lid on. We'll probably do some adaptations tomorrow, but the air gets sucked in the bottom of here, roars across here, and then roars across the bottom here, and then runs up this chimney and out. So, I mean, it's still sitting on the fire. It's still hot, but it's not as hot as it could. I was thinking if I could somehow put the chimney maybe out the back of here, drill a hole in the back of here and have the chimney come out, or I have one hole there. If I add another hole in each one of these corners, but somehow getting the smoke to swirl around this pot here and come out 
I think would heat that up a lot faster. So what I did now is I just put a plate over the top, close that off so it's not roaring like that, and it's encouraging some more smoke to come out of this hole. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm winning or, or losing there. I'm going to keep playing with it. The concept's still good. It's kind of neat, and like I said, it costs us nothing. I looked at a really cool unit today. I'm hoping to uh, go there with the kids tomorrow. It's a local guy here. He taps, uh, I think he said 1,400 taps last year, 1,200 this year. So it be cool if I can interview him and take a look at that tomorrow. You look miserable. That's better. <laughs> yeah. We are doing a tour today, school trip. Visiting Lloyd Elliott of Elliott Sugarbush locally here. I got some uh, supplies from him this year and uh, he said we could come by for a tour with the kids. So take a look around. So this obviously is a sugar shack. He's got all of his stuff in here. You can see he's cooking away up there. Huge maple bush here. He had 1400 taps last year. This year he reduced to 1200. Still a lot of syrup, and he made 400 liters of syrup last year. He's got a pipeline system, so we use pails. Um, you could hang pails on the trees. We use ice cream pails, so they don't, they're not sturdy enough. We set them on the ground and then use the lines to go from the tree to the pail. Where he's running, all his lines are connected, and then they gravity feed into these tanks. Then he drives around with the tractor, sucks these tanks empty, and brings it all up to the shack here where it, uh, it gravity feeds in. Well, he pumps it into a gravity feed tank and then it feeds into his system. So we'll go have a look. Good morning, guys. This is obviously a little bigger than what we got. <laughs> Ours is working though. Good. I had to do some adaptations to it, but it's cooking now. It only does uh, maybe 30 liters at a time or something. Well, we something. just we just made it a bunch of scrap right like, so. like you can take one of these pans and make syrup too just like see this is just yeah it just cooks second. slower right right just, well, a lot slower but really what i'm doing here for say 1200 tops it's too much for this evaporator okay you should but have a bigger I one i have the reverse osmosis oh that's right yeah it makes you. a big difference huh? the water goes up here the well, the steam comes up and it's actually going up that pipe, but it condensates on the walls. So it runs down these channels and that, and then you can see them dripping out in the pails on each side. But also inside the hood, I've got a bowl below the chimney for the steam. And I'll show you over here. collect the steam or the condensate of water. I've got hot water for doing dishes. Well, there you go. Or whatever. There's a big tank in there. Well, it's oh, about a, a 20 inch bowl underneath the chimney. Okay. And I got a plumb so it'll come out for me. Handy. There, it reduces the amount of water I have to carry up here. Right, you don't have any water here. You told me you had no hydro in here either. No right? hydro, yeah. yeah. I've got the generator. And if needed. I fired up the generator this morning, filled up my gravity feed tank. Okay, so you bring it in from the bush. And here's the woodshed. Okay, all of yeah. it's up here. This tank came from Wags Creamery in Mindamoya. My father got it a lot of years Old ago. Old stainless steel milk tank. Yeah, uh, it was actually called the cream tank there. Cream tank, okay. So the farmers would have brought their milk to it and dumped it in there. Yep. <laughs> okay. And you do that from outside, all oh, through that hose? Well, there's a hose from the outside. That yep. There, and I've got a gas pump on my uh, back trailer of the tractor there for the, the sap, But So that goes in here, and then you have a float that keeps this thing full. Right. So this is going in on its own. The float regulates how much is coming in. This is just a float. So you can see it's coming in there. As he's cooking it down, more water's coming in from that tank that he just showed us. Okay, and then here it's hooked up. If you look here, it goes in. So that's going into this tank, which we can't see into, but... 
So it's all boiling inside of here. Yeah? Don't touch good, it'll be hot. So the fire is in there and runs through this thing all the way up. And it heats the whole bottom of this pan. And then it'll go up the chimney and out. And so all of this is cooking. And then it'll move back and forth in there. And eventually ends up in these front ones. Inside the back of that pan there, there's flues. Yep. And that's the side of the pan there, and the side of the pan there. And there's a divider up the middle. So the way the arch is built underneath, the flames go up in between these flues, so you get more boiling surface. So that when the flame's going up there, you got more surface to make that. And yep. it uses all the heat versus there, just a flat pan, which takes a lot longer. And I'm just boiling water right now to check the boiling point. I did it once, but my dipper says different. Boiling point of water in Fahrenheit is 212 degrees. Syrup is seven degrees above the boiling point of water. So I've set this dial that's on the furnace or on the evaporator to zero on boiling water. But when my comes up to seven degrees there, which I think it's above it now, uh, I take the dipper and I check the thickness of the syrup when it's cooling off, and that's more accurate than using temperature. And there's another way of doing it with these things called hydrometers. But I find you waste a lot of syrup, so I hardly ever use it. The dipper is the most accurate. You've been doing it long enough, you know what you're looking for, so. Yeah. You finish it in there too, or you bring it home? No, I, I actually, see the two pots in that little cart? I'll yep. put the syrup in there, draw off the batch, and then I'll heat it up on these propane stoves. Oh, stove, okay, right here, yep. Double check that I'm right, and then I'll save it to go through the filter press. Oh, right, you were showing yeah. me that yesterday. Yeah, so that's that over there. Press, I'll put it through that when I got a big enough batch. You said you are fifth generation? Yeah. Doing syrup? Yep. For a long time. Yep, yep. There are limits there. to how long you can tap the trees? Sorry, well, uh, the, the one part there where you've seen the tank that's almost full, yep. where there's 200 taps on there, they've been on tap now for since the 70s. For a long time, yeah. So, yeah, they're, as long as you're careful where you choose the tap each year, they're, they'll be fine. They're, they're fine. Yep. But uh, eventually I will move things. I'm just going to... Look out, kids. Yeah. See, according to this right now, I'm half a degree above the boil, or above syrup. Too much. We let that cool off a little bit. See, the drips are too fast. When it's syrup, it's going to come off and spread out and make a long, long, long. It's slowing down. You see that last drip is holding on but it's still too thin. So my dial gauge isn't working all that accurate. 2.0, it's uh, 43 to one. If I boil off 43 gallons of sop, yeah. I'll get one gallon of syrup. Right, makes sense. So that particular tree that we tasted yesterday might have been like a four or five or something maybe. Or could be, yeah. For whatever reason. The, okay. the highest I've ever seen out of, when you put everything together is about 2.8. Oh, okay. 2.8, that's 30 to one. That's pretty good. That's really good. How much fire would you go through? Uh, liters of syrup last year, using the reverse osmosis. 400 I, liters, Wowzers. Yeah, and I, I burnt about 20 face quarters of wood. A good chunk of wood. Well, you think go before that, that would have been 40 to 50 quarters. Before you had this system? Before I had the reverse osmosis. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, yep, that makes sense, yep. Because you've cut your burn time down. Yeah. yeah. This evaporator is also a lot more efficient with that flue pan. The old pan we okay. had, were, they were just flat pans. Flat bottom instead of the corrugated yeah. like you showed. Uh, it's what went between the pans. So you had one big flat pan and a smaller pan and a smaller pan. You filled them up, it's like a siphon, as long as the levels Okay, it would pull itself across. It would pull itself over. So, I, I could, and this is from, say, the. Well, that's lead solder. It'd be a little old. It's 
I'd say it's from 30s or 40s. 30s, 40s, okay. Look at the pack. Yeah, okay. Cast iron spiles. The old, that's uh, what I used when I was a kid. And then we went to that in the uh, 80s. And just recently, in the last 10 years, we went to 5 sixteenths versus 7 sixteenths. Smaller holes. Yeah. Okay, so that's, it, what, that's the ones we got there in the black Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing how fast the tree can heal over with the 5 sixteenths versus the 7 sixteenths. You would have used lines for those first ones too? These? Yes. Nope. Oh, no, that's buckets. You got a hook no, on They would have had the buckets okay. hanging off of that. Yeah, yeah you go too. Oh, yeah, hard to see. The second, the top of the it's hard to see from that side. It does that too. That tells you you're getting kind of close. Yeah, this is the stage where it usually turns to candy for us. Oh, it boils over <laughs> on you. That's why it goes really fast. All okay, the if, if you've got butter and margarine or an oil, just put it in there. You just put a little dab in, like a quarter of a teaspoon. Throw it in there, and that will knock that down. Okay. Actually, I'll show you. I use kosher anti-foam. I bought this about seven or eight years ago. It used very little. Uh, I just took a pinch. I'm just going to throw half a pinch in there and half a pinch in there. Oh wow! See how it knocks it down? Yeah, I don't think the camera got it, but yeah, it, the bubbles are way down. Isn't that something? Yeah, and the, I've got a good heat on because, well, you can even see the difference in the color of the boils in the back pan. Yeah. Boy, that smells delicious. Have you ever tried birch? No. The, the reason being is birch is the sugar content really low like it's 80, 80 to 1 to, okay 90 yeah, to 1 yeah. so that's four times as much wood really okay there but but countries that don't have maple syrup then obviously that's the only yeah. option i guess and when we lived in western canada they don't have any maples no so i knew some people that tapped birch i never actually tried it Still not syrup though. How much syrup have you made so far this year? This will be my first batch. First batch. There you go. We're on a lucky day. Uh, what? Ten years ago, I bought this little pump, Princess Auto, for ninety dollars. Mm, she's running good. And that's all I have to use. Before, I'd use a, a submersible pump to yep. go into the barrels. Okay. Yeah, It'd yeah. yeah. Take forever just to pump. Say, this one would move a lot more fluid. Oh yeah. There, I can fill a, a, a tote like this up in about 10 minutes. So okay. This one's 350 gallons. Yeah, it's a little bigger now. Yeah. But there, just change the oil and keep the mice out of it and you're okay. Keeping a lid on helps. Yeah. Oh, quite a bit from yesterday. Huh? It did, yeah. I am trying to remember where it was. So, this thing here you were explaining to me yesterday, that's used to go on the old stone boat, right? Yep, that's the tank they gathered. Uh, I don't know if the snow is off the top of it enough. So they would have pails on the trees, dump them into this, yep. pull it through the bush with a horse. Oh, I never noticed yesterday, it actually has a lid on it. Okay. Screen in it, so no bark and little bugs okay. get into it. Filters it right away. Yep. And then this pipe here, it's on a rubber grommet, and it just tips over when you want to put so it into your big tank. Right. And there's actually an AJW on there. That'd be my grandmother's father's brother aj wag was the man that had wag's store and wag's creamery okay and i've seen wag right here okay i've seen a sign for wag creamery somewhere uh, we're... so you said you have 1400 taps last year this year 1200 yeah i cut back a little bit because it was just too much for me too much work yep and then it all gravity flows into here Oh, multiple tanks. You have... Uh, I've got seven of these tanks. Seven tanks, okay. Pretty neat, eh? There, so similar to what we're needed. doing. I call it the field line. You can just see it way in the back there. That, that's got a beautiful slope. The, the four tanks I have on there have the, the beautiful downhill. The black one is the field line, is it? Uh, further back. This one here curls back in there, but... Oh, it dumps into further here. Further back there. On the field, I have four tanks. Okay. 
So all these blue ones go into the black one. Yep, that's called the main line. And then it hooks up and dumps in the barrel. It's a lot of sap. He was telling me that yesterday that we can just get caps for the end of it. We don't have to haul them all in. Like this keeps the keeps bugs and stuff from crawling in the uh, hose. Wasps, I call them. Right, that's the problem we have with our first year with the hoses. They all get yep. junked and then you try to wash them out. And they were hard to get cleaned out too. Uh, sorry. Well, that was back when the tree was shorter. <laughs> oh, that's when we had lots of snow. Oh, okay. There, but uh, yeah, you can see on the trees back there now, even though we don't have much snow. I've got the, the that what they call the drops from the spile oh, down to the yeah. the other line. There, I've got it so the gravity creates a vacuum. But yeah, pulls more out of the tree that way. It keeps the sap out of the spile. Okay. So that it, that the sap actually helps healing process. So instead of having a month, I'd have three weeks. Okay. Things like that. But there are some situations where it just doesn't work out. Who's first? Called maple butter. Maple butter? Why you kick stick? I have a whole bunch of sticks here. Mm. Yummy. Mm. You guys can make this. Now you were telling me that yesterday. How do you how do you do that again? Twenty-one degrees above the boiling point of water. Okay. Then take it off and whip it. Uh, you've got to let it cool off. Okay. There, and be very careful when you're uh, moving it around. If you bang it, you'll actually see the sugar crystals develop on top of the, the, the thick syrup. Okay. Then, well, come on. And you want that or don't want you that? You don't want that. Okay. Yeah. These guys will be bouncing off the walls there very shortly. <laughs> Why is this so thin? It's warm, I guess. I don't want to stick but, to the spoon. <laughs> Thank you. Dad? No, oh, yeah, I won't say no to that. <laughs> you know, I could make some toffee, but these guys are probably Made toffee already? Not this year yet. Mm. Soon. Thank you very much. Nobody's got candy. peanut allergies? Does that go so good with peanut butter? No, no allergy there, no. And this is all the way, it's always like this there. You get so, but then there's that little sign on the side there. They changed the grading system a few years ago. And we got to follow that now. But uh, I don't care for the light syrup. Some people just love it. Me, the darker the better. But a guest book going for everybody. Uh, well, I can show you something here on this side. There's a guest book and log book. How far back does that go? 1996. There you go. And there, my uncle, he liked doing math. Uh, 214 imperial gallons is almost a thousand liters. Yeah. Yeah, and there's more math over there. And, well, that's covered up, but my father used the uh, expression, a full bag of sugar. Uh, just one underneath here, if I can. Stuck to something. A poor loaf of bread. Generally, if you get a real good syrup season, yep. there your wheat crops generally eh. not so good. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. But they fit together like that. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, and uh, what year was it? I've got a chart here. I made 750 liters in 2019. Yeah. That was, was a no, bad crop year. That was a bad crop year. Okay, so we actually have to hope for bad syrup years. <laughs> In a way, yeah. Uh.
Well, thank you very much, Lloyd, oh, for uh, turning us around here as a token of appreciation. We brought you a hat. A hat? Oh! Well, I'll, I'll keep that one clean. Yeah, you do whatever you like with yeah, it. So. Well, <laughs> my hats don't last very long. No, they'll get dirty. So. Well, you thank you very much. Me. Well, thank you. Here, I'll set that right up there for clean stuff. All right, that was an enjoyable uh, visit to the sugar bush. Really enjoyed it. I think everybody else did. You guys enjoy your time? Can't see me real good, but anyway, I made some changes to the uh, little system we've got set up here, and that wasn't really working, so I figured I was going to end up having to put a little chimneys up to get more draw. But now it's dark, I was looking outside. So we've got the door open. I don't know if I can turn, uh, there we go, that's better. I got uh, the door open here, and it's sucking west, just filled us up, and I see flames shooting out the top. So we're cooking now, That's this is what we need. So now we've got fire roaring around this bin that's gonna get it hot I think if we can maintain that so I was thinking maybe I should build some chimneys off here the higher we get with a chimney the more draw there will be right because it's just starts sucking you'll get this noise going on so but this is working I like that we should have a look at this sap here see what we're working on obviously can't touch these handles anymore everything's a little too warm Oh yeah, look at that. That's boiling now. So that is what we've been wanting all day. I don't know if you can see that boil. Perfect. Well, I might not need to put chimneys on. That's what I want right there. That's awesome. We've made some more modifications. It actually worked pretty good last night. So I took you out in the dark there, showed you the flames. It was boiled down. We filled her back up now again, but it was boiled down about here, I think is what Wes said, right? Yeah. So anyway, I built the little chimneys on the back here now. Those two triangles I had cut in. More draw, the better. Unfortunately, they kind of lean out a little bit, but anyway. We weren't going for beauty, we are going for function. That works good. So now that's drawing a little bit more. I'm actually going to put some longer lengths on here yet. Wes figures there's a bit more in the scrap pile yet, so... We'll take a look into that. The higher we get, the better draw, and also less smoke in our face. So it's working anyway. A little cheap evaporator. Of course, you need to have all this stuff in your scrap pile, but it hasn't cost me a dime. It's all just uh, stuff that was in the junk. We'll keep cooking and see what happens. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Darling, we could get out of town See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand Hey, darling I love it when it's me and you on the road with a couple of tunes in a car for two Hey darling You know we're gonna have a really good time Driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright 